What we're going to be doing for our chicken parmesan lab is we're going to be talking about some vocabulary and some methods. For, so for this recipe, the first thing that we're going to be doing is dredging. Um, we're also going to be breading, which is the procedure after you're dredging, and we will be pan frying. So the first thing that I'm starting with here is the chicken. So these cutlets have already been um, sliced thinly and they are, that's gonna be the other part of what we're doing, which is butterflying a chicken breast. So we're gonna get a larger piece of chicken breast and we're gonna be cutting it into these thinner cutlets and I'll show you that as well. And I have flour, two eggs and some milk and some breadcrumbs and also some Parmesan cheese that I left here. Uh, just to remember to show you that I usually mix that in. Now, standard breading procedure is just like this, but you could vary this quite a bit, right? You could put some herbs into the breadcrumbs if you like. You could use cornmeal or cornflakes or potato chips or lots of different things. But what you do want to remember to do is to season everything. So you want to put salt and pepper in each one of the breading components. Sprinkle evenly with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. You want to make sure that you have one hand wet and one hand dry, otherwise you're going to be breading your hand or the forks or the tongs. In school we'll wear gloves. Okay, so this is going to be my dry hand. And when you're working on this, you want to make sure that you are nowhere near any kind of fresh food so that you avoid any cross-contamination. Okay, so I'm gonna use my dry hand to plop it into the wet. And you wanna make sure that you really get like, the, the, the flour's purpose is that it's basically a glue, right, that is mixing here with the egg. And this gives it just that extra crispy coating. Now I have a really big pan here and I'm only gonna be doing four cutlets or five cutlets there. So I'm gonna leave this in the pan, but otherwise what you could put this on is you could put this on a cooling rack over a sheet pan, and it's really nice if you have the time to let this dry and the coating will stay on better when you're frying it. And you don't need an exact measurement for this. It's tricky to come up with because you don't wanna overdo it because you can't save any of this, but you don't wanna do too little so that you run out. I'm gonna switch to my dry hand. Okay, so instead of putting this down the sink, I'm gonna make sure that this goes into the garbage and then into the dishwasher. Okay, at this point, I have my pan and I'm ready to start frying. I was preheating this before, but what you're looking for is for if you throw a little bit of the breadcrumbs in for it to start sizzling. I'm gonna keep my uncooked product away from what is going to be my cooked product. I also have my thermometer ready. I need the internal temperature of the chicken to be 165. And I'm going to use a clean fork to get the cutlets out here so that I don't cross contaminate my raw tongs with my cooked chicken. All right, so I'm starting to fry up nicely there. And in here I have canola oil or vegetable oil, which is best for frying. It's best for frying because it has a high smoke point which means it takes a higher temperature before the oil starts to smoke. You don't want to crowd the pan, and you don't want your heat so high that it starts really browning too much on the outside, and then it's still raw in the center. The reason why we butterfly the chicken into thin cutlets like this is so that it cooks quicker. If you were to do a whole chicken breast, it would take way too long to pan fry. The definition of pan fry is that it is halfway up the food, which is exactly what we have here. It's not completely covered. And I notice the center of my pan is getting hotter than the outside. Because I can see that it's browning there, so I'm just giving these a turn. So they brown evenly. And one of the most annoying things about pan fry is that if you're doing a large batch, you have to change the oil and you have to um, get out these brown pieces at the bottom because it's sitting in it. In a deep fryer, all of those brown pieces would go to the bottom and would be strained out. But when you're pan frying, you don't want all of those burned little pieces on the bottom to um, 
get stuck on your cutlets and whatever else you're frying. You still have to worry about splattering. And I have my pan over here. I just have a clean sheet pan with some paper towels to absorb the grease. Now, I was on high heat to bring it up to temperature, but I'm watching it and constantly adjusting the heat. You can tell by the bubbles, obviously, and also the smoke coming off of it, how hot it is. You can also take the temperature of the oil. We are at about 350, a little higher. So it got um, 350 is perfect. We do have um, splatter screens in the kitchen that you can put on top of this so that nothing splatters up at you. And I think it's time to check the temp and see where I'm at. So I'm only at 140 right now. Because that is the larger side of the cutlet. So you really do have to check it at different spots. All right, that one is all done. So I'm going to take a fork, make sure I get, let it drip. Okay, so at this point you want to make sure that they are really wiped dry so that they stay nice and crispy. Turn them over, make sure you get both sides. Okay. And you are ready to assemble them into chicken parmesan or if you weren't making that, to eat them just as is.